Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to the channel. So today I thought it'd be an interesting video to share with you guys things that I've learned along this really long fitness journey of mine. I have been actively working out like regularly for the past 13 years. I thought this kind of video could be very helpful especially to those who are just maybe starting their fitness journey this year, 2020 baby, uh, just to kind of give you guys some insight from my own personal experiences, maybe save you some struggles, some hard times, maybe try to avoid some things. So I've come up with 10, so let's get into this. But if you're not already, definitely do hit that subscribe button for new videos every single week. Okay, let me stop dancing now. <laughs> Here we go, let me check my phone. My notes here, okay. In no particular order, okay? Number one is to eat and drink enough protein, girlfriend. Did not know this starting out. If you are working out and especially lifting weights, okay, you're trying to tone up, protein is one of the most important things you need to make sure you're getting enough of. I shoot for my body weight in grams of protein. So I'm 120 pounds, I shoot for 120 grams of protein per day. I have noticed extreme results since doing that. You get used to it, it's very hard to get that kind of protein in every day, but supplements are amazing and you just kind of learn what your body needs, what you can eat, you know, things like that. I have noticed serious gains. I feel like my work at the gym is being very pronounced visibly now. And not only that, but I, my hair started to grow. My nails. What? My, everything on me is like freaking brittle usually. <laughs> but since really tracking my protein intake, I've noticed results all around, girl. I'm, I'm freaking happy about that. So, protein. Lesson number two that I learned is to not ignore your back. When I first started working out, I only trained what I could see. So if I'm looking in at, the, at myself in the mirror, I would just basically work arms, abs, legs, and just ignore the whole backside. <laughs> it wasn't until James and I started dating five years ago where he took a random picture of me fishing. It's actually my first time ever fishing and my last. Um, <laughs> so he took a picture of me from the back and when I saw that picture, I couldn't believe it. So I was working out regularly and thought I was doing great until I saw the back. And I was like, whoa, I'm completely out of shape back there. The tone up here doesn't match the tone back here. And that's when I said, girl, oh my God, what am I doing? I'm sure a lot of people, you know, know better, but this is just me and this is what I learned. So I'm training back regularly, girl. I'm training hammies regularly, girl. You gotta just, you gotta even distribution. Treat your whole body equally. Number three, big lesson I learned is to take more progress pictures. You don't think about it during the time being. Till later on, down in the line of your fitness journey, you go, I really wish I had taken pictures from when I first started. I'm talking from all angles. I'm talking like weekly, jot it down, definitely document this journey. You will love yourself for it. I never did that. I'm going based off of pictures that I just randomly took, you know, like me with family. <laughs> you wanna take certain pictures that you can put away in your progress folders. Break it up by month, week, year. Five years down the line, you're gonna say, holy crap, I can't believe how far I've come. You will not realize it that much during the time being, as you're going along in your fitness journey, until you look back. Okay, so lesson number four is to not be afraid to challenge my body. What I used to do is just the bare minimum, basically. Do my full body, you know, go through, lift my weights, target every area, but not ever really challenge. Now, of course, this depends on your overall goals, okay? Not everybody wants to lift heavy weight or do anything extreme, that's fine. But for me, I always wondered, why am I not seeing more results? I am doing the same thing every day, I'm very consistent, why? That's why though, <laughs> because it's just that. I was, I was working with what I was comfortable with, thinking that that was okay. Our bodies are designed for intensity. We tend to think that whatever feels good, we kind of just 
leave it at that. We don't want to feel discomfort in any way. Granted, when I say discomfort, I mean challenges. Obviously, if you're hurting during a workout, you stop that, girl. But overall, just challenging yourself and stepping outside of that comfort zone will bring you further than if you just stay put and just do what you're comfortable with, believe it. So for a while, I was just doing the bare minimum and it wasn't until the last like year and a half that I started to challenge myself and not only do I see better results, I also find it more fun, okay? I look forward to the gym because I'm like, I don't know, but I might hit a new goal today. You're capable of more than you realize. That's what I've learned. You are capable of way more than you realize, okay? Number five of what I've learned is that not all pre-workouts make you geeky. I wrote off taking pre-workouts because I had really bad experiences <laughs> back in the day when I would go to the gym with my brother and try his pre-workout. C4, it was intense. And for some reason, I just assumed that all pre-workout was like that. And this goes for any supplements, not just pre-workout. Everybody's body's different and everybody's body reacts to supplements differently. So if one works for somebody, might not work for another person. Took me a while to realize that, all right? Because I'm gonna be real with you, girl. Since taking pre-workout, it changed my freaking life. <laughs> it changed my workouts and my momentum. It changed my everything. I'm currently taking Fuel by Campus Protein and it works for me. It heats my body up. I feel like I have natural energy. I feel perfect on it. I don't get jittery or nauseous or anything like that. So definitely when looking into pre-workouts, don't just write off a supplement just because you had a bad experience like I did. <laughs> I wish I had given it a chance a long time ago so that I could have probably had just better all around workouts. So what are you going to do? Tip number six, Woo, girl, this is a big one. Don't be afraid to eat. <laughs> I'm going to tell you a quick story right now. When I lived in California, I, I wanted to lose weight. Okay. Body fat percent. So it's true. If you want to lose weight, your body does have to be in a caloric deficit. True. However, you need to do it in a healthy manner. Slow and steady. That wins the race. Not cold turkey. And that's what your girl did. Cold frickin' turkey. Not just cold turkey, but unhealthy. I was running on a palm full of oats in the morning and to peas for the rest of the afternoon. I know that's cringe and you're probably like rolling your eyes like dog girl, but this is a part of the journey, okay? Making some seriously stupid mistakes. So I don't want anybody to make that mistake. If you're trying to lose weight, you gotta go about it right, you gotta treat your body right. That's not how you wanna do it. You're gonna end up A, getting sick, B, binging. What happened for me and what happens usually is when you go cold turkey, your body will not lose weight. It'll literally hold on to everything it has for survival. <laughs> it's going to make you bloat, okay? Nobody likes that. And your body's in starvation mode, so you ain't gonna lose any weight. The way you wanna go about it is slowly decreasing your calories, but you need to be able to sustain your body, okay, your functions. I would get s severely tired throughout the day, crash, just kinda sleep for the rest of the night. Who, you can't live like that, okay? You're gonna kill yourself, no. Don't be afraid to eat, and if you are working out, girl, you need to nourish your body. Don't be afraid of food. It's not the enemy, okay? Some food is, yes, okay? You gotta eat right, and eat a lot of that right food, okay? Don't worry, I will be making a ton of videos pertaining to natural foods, how to have a balanced all, all around type of diet, so stay tuned for that, but yeah, don't be afraid to eat, girl. I made that mistake. And remember, it's not about just sitting here losing weight. It's about being healthy and getting your body right. That naturally comes with it. So focus on that first, focus on your health, doing what's right for your body. The weight loss will come with it in time. Number seven, rest days are just as important as your training days. If not, maybe even a little more, maybe not. When I first started my fitness journey, I started my very first gym membership was Planet Fitness because I was like, oh my God, $20 a month. Oh. I started and I worked out with a personal trainer there and I was like obsessed, I was hooked, all right? That was the beginning of, I was 17 years old, I was hooked on fitness. You couldn't get me out of the gym. 
but that's also a problem because I was going seven days a week, okay, plus. And I remember one day I got there and I was literally on the tricep extension machine. I remember the exact machine I was on. Trainer comes by, hey, what's going on? I was like, ah, not much, I'm just not feeling it today. It's like, you okay? Nah, I just, I don't feel well. He asked me when my last rest day was and I was like, what? <laughs> what do you mean a rest day? He said, no, you're supposed to rest your body, okay? Who knew? I thought, honestly, the, the more you work out, just the better, plain and simple. That's it. That's not true. Your body needs to rest, okay? If you're tearing up that muscle, which lifting weights, you're literally tearing up your muscle, you need time for that muscle to repair itself before injuring it again. So when you take those rest days, that's where your muscles are made, okay? Not necessarily at the gym, okay? That's when you're ripping them apart. Yeah! Uh. But when you wanna recover, you need to just kick back, watch a movie, and eat good food, lots of protein. Number eight of what I've learned, okay. Self-tanner is a godsend. I currently have self-tanner on, okay. I used to fake big, like in the tanning bed, right? Because Planet Fitness offers that. And I used to do it so much I actually noticed patches on my back forming and then I stopped. So since then I started trying out different self tanners and right now I am using tan cuticles, which I like because it doesn't really rub off on everything on my sheets and stuff um, in the color ultra dark. You've probably seen it in my other videos, but I love this one and it just gives a natural glow. The reason why I am pertaining this to fitness is because you would not believe the difference in your overall, your body and the ability to see your muscle definition when you have a tanner on. And if you do use tanner, you already know. But if you don't, it's crazy. It's a crazy difference. When I start to fade, like the tan fades over the week, it's insane. It looks like all my gains are gone. And James, I actually got James on the bandwagon. Can you believe it? He's using my self tanner. It's funny and it's, it's annoying at the same time. So now I gotta go buy more. He swears by it too. It's a visible difference. You just can see you, your muscles are way more pronounced, hands down. So um, when his started to fade, I noticed it too. It just feel, it like looks like you actually lost your tone. So not the most important thing in the world, but I will say that if you're somebody who's just try, trying to look your best, I guess, and kind of see all the definition to its full potential, then perhaps try to invest in a little self tanner, right? I think you'd be surprised. It's freaking awesome. I won't go without it. Next lesson learned goes kind of with the whole aesthetic thing, like the self tanner. It's don't be afraid to invest in yourself when it comes to gear and exercise equipment type of thing, like high quality things. I know that gym gear, especially like the higher quality, I know it's really freaking expensive, believe it. But what I've come to find is for me, it's absolutely 100% worth it. Not only because you're working with high quality gear that will last you potentially longer, but it's gear that is designed to be flattering. So when you're working out um, or pictures, whatever you're doing, it's simply going to flatter you more, which is gonna make you, at least for me, more confident and more likely to keep going, okay? I know this sounds crazy, but Trust in me. I used to buy very inexpensive, and there is a lot of great inexpensive gear out there, believe me. I used to go like, really cheap, to the point where it's like, it's bad. And it was like, it, like this, the gym gear would just like hang off of me. I looked sloppy. Mm. So now that I've kind of invested that, you know, I, it's, it's made a world of difference and I actually find it way more fun to work out. So this also goes along with like equipment or anything you might need uh, for maybe working out at home or bringing to the gym. Investing in yourself is very, very important. This is your health. There's no price tag on that health of yours, girlfriend. Like my daddy always says, your health is your wealth. Tip number 10, life lesson learned is to bring healthy foods with you at all times, no matter where you're going. I mean, no matter. Like if I'm going to the grocery store or I got a few errands to run, I'm still bringing protein bars with me. I'm still bringing like loose nuts. That's what she said. 
Um, <laughs> the point being is I, I used to not. You end up just eating whatever's around. And now girl, I don't know about you, but I get hangry. Not only are you gonna be in a bad mood, but your energy levels are gonna decline. And then your body starts to go into like a catabolic state, which means you're actually going to be burning off those gains. You wanna keep those gains. That's the goal in life. You don't want to use your gains as energy. Mm -mm. No. The bonus one, here we go. So basically number 11, <laughs> learning what to look for and what to avoid on nutrition labels. Only started doing this about a year ago maybe a year and a half. I used to just kind of go to the grocery store, see something on the shelf that looks like it could be healthy, should be healthy, keyword, should be. It's labeled healthy or organic and I buy it. Just because something is labeled organic or healthy does not mean that it is, <laughs> really. You could be buying apple slices, right? That say, yeah, it's healthy. It's healthy because you're getting apples, but they're also loading it with sugar. Like that's probably the main ingredient. Like you gotta look into things like that. So the things I look for is A, portion size, okay? Because when you're looking at a nutrition label, it's by portion size, not the whole thing. And a lot of people, they automatically assume that it's for like say a bag of chips like this, they'll look at a nutrition label, see 35 grams of carbs and go, that's not bad for the bag but that's just a serving size, which is probably like two or three chips. I don't know about you, but I don't eat just two or three chips. Absolutely not, I'm gonna eat the whole bag. So it's definitely a good idea to learn how to read a nutrition label. Looking at those carbs, looking at the sodium, big deal. So learning how to break it down, seeing what you're gonna be eating, uh, it's gonna definitely help you to achieve your goals. Sodium's a big one for me. If, if I don't care about sodium, I'm going to bloat. You're gonna retain water and you're gonna lose your muscle definition. You're gonna get dehydrated. There's so much more to a nutrition label than just calories. And another big one is ingredients too. Gotta look at the ingredients. Always see what's ranked highest. So the first ingredient is always the ingredient that is most prominent in that particular food product. Um, and then it's scaled down. So the last ingredient would be what is least in the product. So I always factor that in. I could go into detail on that too, but bottom line is to definitely learn how to read a nutrition label thoroughly so that you can make more health conscious decisions and not kind of get fooled with that whole healthy organic label game, okay? No, that was 10 years ago, girl. That was 10 years ago. So yeah, things change. Okay guys, so um, that was, that was it, that was it. A total of 11 things that I have learned that have changed my fitness game. I hope this video could help some of you in your fitness journey. Hope you guys enjoyed this video and thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you next time.